السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions. We thank Him for everything He has bestowed upon us. There are so many favors that Allah has given us that we take for granted. We need to think about it and constantly praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the one whom Allah chose to bring the goodness to us. No matter what we do, we must always send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that if you are to send blessings and salutations to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once, Allah will bless you tenfold in return. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance. Similarly, we send blessings upon the wives, the family members, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, those who struggled, those who strove to name just a few, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Umar Al-Farooq radiallahu anhu, Uthman Adil Nurayn, Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu anhum jami'an, Aisha radiallahu anha, what a great woman, the mother of the believers, Hafsa radiallahu anha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and may Allah unite us in Jannah with them, Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, it is important for us to realize that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats things in the Quran and he does so very often, he does it for a reason. He says, And remind, for indeed the reminding benefits those who truly believe. If you really believe, you will not be irritated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeating so many times in the Quran. It will be an honor to listen to it. It will be an honor to implement it. And the same applies in our lives when we are doing something wrong, my brothers and sisters. If you are reminded once, twice, ten times, do not be irritated. Rather, if you're a true believer, you will thank the person reminding you, I really thank you. You will make dua for them because that is a person whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to come and guide you, to remind you, to get to the straight path. Your path to paradise will be through those types of reminders. That's why it's a sign of a true believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help Help us to save ourselves from Jahannam and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry into paradise through his mercy. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 12 of Surah Yunus makes mention of how when man needs something, he calls out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When he is standing, he makes a dua. When he is sitting, he makes a dua. When he's on his side, he makes a dua. And then Allah says, when we respond to that dua and when we give him what he wants, Man sometimes is such that he continues on earth in a way that he forgets that he'd ever called out to Allah in the past. Listen to what Allah says. وَإِذَا مَسَّ الْإِنسَانَ الضُّرُّ دَعَانَا لِجَنْبِهِ أَوْ قَاعِدًا أَوْ قَائِمًا فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَنْ لَمْ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes at the end of these verses how those who go beyond the limits known as al-musrifun, it is their quality and it is them who, whose deeds, whose bad deeds are beautified to them. May Allah protect us from being from amongst the musrifun, from amongst those who transgress, those who do bad and evil. Allah says, when man is afflicted with some form of harm, he calls out to Allah. He calls out to Allah on his side or while he is sitting or while he is standing. And then when we have alleviated or taken away that suffering, he continues on earth like he's never called out to us in the past. Subhanallah, Allah is telling us, remember, you made dua to me and I answered that dua. It happened in your life. When you were sick, you called out to me, I cured you. Now change your life. Subhanallah, why is it that with us, we don't save ourselves by changing our lives. When we are sick and ill, we make a dua. When we get better, we go back to our sins. It happens. So this is a reminder. And Allah repeats it so many times in the Quran that look, 
when you were at loss, when you suffered a financial loss, when you suffered through your divorce, when you went through this problem, when you had that issue with your children, when you had whatever other problem in your family, in your business and so on, you made a dua to us. We responded. And then when we responded, you now did not dress properly. You did not come for salah. You did not quit your bad ways and habits. In fact, you went back to those bad ways and habits that you had quit. When you were in a problem, this is why Muhammad says, Inna Allaha idha ahabba abdan ibtalahu. When Allah really loves his worshipper, he tests him. And sometimes he keeps him in the test. Because when you are in a test, in a calamity, in a difficulty, you are always softer in your heart. You are crying to Allah. You are in salah. You are making tahajjud. Allah loves it. He doesn't want to take that problem away. Because he knows if I leave it, he's going to continue in tahajjud. And if I take it away, perhaps all that is going to stop. This is why the hadith says when Allah has tested you, he actually loves you. He drew you closer to him through that problem. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. Look at the power of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draw us closer to him without problems. Ameen, ameen, ameen. So that was just a reminder for ourselves to save ourselves, subhanallah, from this type of quality or these types of qualities whereby after Allah has granted us ease, we go back to our evil ways. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that those who had earned the punishment due to their sin, they need to know that when we punish, we only punish equivalent to the sin. Let me tell you something interesting. When you do a good deed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man bil hasanati falahu ashru amthaliha. Whoever comes with a good deed shall have that deed multiplied by 10. Do you know what that means? If you do a good deed, and you protect it. What does protecting it mean? I haven't donated it to someone through backbiting, through slander, through cheating, through deceiving, through wrong, through me doing wrong to someone. When you do that to someone, your good deeds go to them. So you did the good deed, but on the day of judgment, you did not come with it. It was gone. In fact, on that day before anything happened to you already, your deeds started disappearing. That man came, he wanted his right. Your salah went there. Your zakah went there. Your hajj went there. Whatever else went to all other people. It is known as hadithul muflis. Hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he speaks of the bankrupt person. So Allah says, when you do good deeds and you have protected those good deeds, we will multiply those good deeds for you. But when you do bad, we don't multiply the bad. We only give you the compensation of exactly what you deserved. You did this, you will get exactly equivalent to it. The difficulty is with us. We think something is light. In the eyes of Allah, it is heavy. A person makes some form of remark against someone behind their backs. It's called backbiting. Once Aisha radiallahu anha made a statement. She just said, you know what? She is short. You know, she's very short. Short meaning Sophia binti Huyay radiallahu anha being very short. And she didn't mean it in a derogatory way. But she said she is short. Now, if that statement was said in the presence of Safiya bint Huyayr radiallahu anha, it would have hurt her. So the Prophet sallallahu making mention of the seriousness of the statement. And for you and I, I don't even think we, we would consider it so serious. He says, Wallahi, O Aisha, if that statement was in the form of ink, it would have changed the color of the ocean. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from backbiting. We take it for granted. My brothers and sisters, let's become strong. Allah says, verse number 27 of Surah Yunus, وَالَّذِينَ كَسَبُوا السَّيِّئَاتِ جَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ بِمِثْلِهَا وَتَرْهَقُهُمْ ذِلَّهِ مَا لَهُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ مِنْ عَاصِمٍ On the day of judgment, you know, those who have earned the sin or due to their sin they have earned a punishment that punishment is equivalent to their deed and there will be no savior for them from the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah is the only one who can save you from the punishment keep on asking allah do something for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we always say to ourselves oh allah do not expose the bad that we've done forgive us Brothers and sisters, you would love your sin to be a secret between you and Allah. Why don't you do some good deeds as well? That are also just a secret between you and Allah. No one knows. You know and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Good deeds. 
So when you arrive on the day of judgment, imagine the link you will have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because you know this good I've done. I know it. Allah knows it. I'm waiting for Allah to reward me for this beautiful deed that I've done. Why is it that it's only sin that we want to keep secret? Some of your good deeds as well, keep them a secret. When you get up for tahajjud, you don't have to tell the whole world, you know, the air was so fresh at the time of tahajjud. You've just given it away. You want to tell them I was up. Okay, okay, we know you're holy. We know you're holy. It's fine. Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. You don't need to tell the world. Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, this is a beautiful reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning us about how the evil deeds will be punished, but Allah is the only one who can save you from it. Then the Quran, subhanallah, many of us, we pick it up in the month of Ramadan and we try to finish it. Listen very carefully. That Quran is so powerful. It is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is powerful, absolutely powerful. People who were enemies of Islam, wallahi, their lives changed by listening to one, two, three, or four verses. I can give you two quick examples. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he literally went out to harm Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or to murder him. And on the way, he something happened and he went to his sister's place and he heard a few verses of the Quran. He crumbled and he went and he declared his shahada. How many verses? The opening verses of Surah Taha. They moved a man who was an outright open enemy and he was a strong man, powerful. You know, normally when you have a person who's wealthy and powerful, nothing really affects him easily. He knows, hey, I'm a man, I'm strong here. The verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affected him. He was moved, he changed his life. After that day, wallahi, it's an insult to say Umar without saying radiyallahu anhu, without saying may Allah be pleased with him. He is such a great man. We believe he is the second best from those to tread the earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us his companionship in Jannah. So my brothers and sisters, another example, that of an Najashi. Najashi was the negus of Abyssinia. When he heard a few verses of Surah Maryam, that's the, the Surah just before Surah Taha. He too, he cried according to some of the verses of the Quran that make mention of the tears. Those were the tears of an Najashi, according to the Mufassirin. Imagine a man who was a Christian and he started crying when he heard the Quran. The question I have, we are Muslimin. It's not one verse. We read what we term khatam or khatma, whole Quran from cover to cover. And it did not yet move us. We still involve in the same sin. Our lives still did not change. The entire Quran was read, not once, three, four. We will be proud to say, I finished my khatam in five days. Now I can go touring. You know what happens, the tourists. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. I'm not saying it's something bad, but what I am saying is, Try your best to make sure you are affected and impacted by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do you need to do? Firstly, you need to develop closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to develop closeness to the lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You need to have a love towards it. You need to have a love for the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Positive love. What that means is, when you notice something bad, you deal with it in a positive way, not in a negative way. The weakness with us, we see something bad, we hate the brother. Why? He did something bad. What's your duty as a member of the ummah? You saw someone doing bad. You need to guide them. You need to help them. You need to make dua for them. You need to understand you are part of a family. Your entry into Jannah could also be connected to a good deed that he did as a result of your encouragement. Why don't you understand this? It's amazing. So let us try to change the way we look at things. Then try to understand the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to give you all a challenge and it's a simple challenge, but at the same time, it requires dedication. We all fulfill salah, don't we? The five daily prayers. We all read Surah Al-Fatiha and minimum we know a few of the short surahs or chapters of the Quran. You have to, you have to. In the Arabic language, I challenge you from today to start learning the meanings of the words that you say in your prayer starting from allahu akbar you need to know what it means and when you start your prayer concentrate on what exactly you are saying 
Many of us, including those who know the Arabic language, we just read Surah Al-Fatiha melodiously without really thinking exactly what we've said. Wallahi, it's a fact. Think about it for a minute, what I just said. It's a reality. You know the Arabic in some cases, but you've never thought of the meaning. You were just reading the melody and you enjoyed the melody. And whenever we said Dalin, we just said Amin. I remember reading in Taraweeh once and we were talking about the father of Ibrahim or someone else and the Quran says, Innahu kana min And I heard from the congregation, people were saying, Amin. I was wondering what's going on here. They just tuned to hear Dalin anywhere in the Quran and they say, Amin. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. That's not how it is. My brothers and sisters, think about what you're saying. Save yourselves from wasting this prayer by concentrating in the prayer. We are taught by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, your reward for the prayer that you fulfill is closely connected to how much concentration you have had in that prayer. So yes, your farad might be done, but did you really achieve the greater benefit of that salah? The answer is no in a lot of cases. We just did our farad, we walked out. We were swearing when we were coming in, and as soon as we walked out, we carried on swearing. What did change in our lives? Nothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So learn the meanings of what you are saying in salah. Try and concentrate on it. When you say subhana rabbi al-a'la, go back and learn what that means. We say it so many times. We fulfill salah. It is an insult for us to be fulfilling salah for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years in some cases, and we still don't know what we are saying. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Wallahi. If the tax man comes up with a new law tonight that affects us, we will know it off by heart by tomorrow morning. Do you know that? Because it affects our pockets. It really does. This is something much more serious. It is the word of Allah, the salah that is going to be the first thing you are going to be questioned as you die and you enter your grave. One of the first things is going to be your salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. This is why Allah speaks about the Quran. And Allah says this Quran is not just the word of Allah as in it has no value. Astaghfirullah. The word of Allah means the word of your maker, the most valuable thing in existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in it, there are instructions or reminders. The term used is maw'idha. Maw'idha meaning a reminder or instruction, some form of guidance, wa'ad, a warning as well. And with that, there is cure. In the Quran, there is cure. Cure for what? The sicknesses in the heart. That which is in your chest. The sickness. And the Quran is so beautiful, it has in it cure even for your physical sickness. If you are sick and ill, people say this person is sick. Wallahi, just listen to the Quran and see the impact it has even on non-Muslims. It has an impact even on plants and animals. The Quran has an impact. Has it impacted upon you? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. It really saves people from depression, saves people from anxiety, saves people from all forms of sickness, whether inside the heart or physical. Trust the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely it has in it shifa and cure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says above that it has huda, which means guidance. And it has in it the mercy of Allah. You want mercy. You want to be protected from the punishment of Allah. If you want the mercy of Allah, read the Quran. Try and understand it. Put it into practice. Convey it to others. Your life will be filled with guidance and mercy. Listen to what Allah says. Verse number 57, Surah Yunus. Ya ayyuhannas. O people. He doesn't just say, O Muslimin. If he wanted, he could have said, O you who believe. He said it so many times in the Quran. For this one, he says, O people. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ مَوْعِظَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Indeed, this maw'idha has come to you from your Rabb. What is the maw'idha? The instruction, the reminder, the Quran has come to you from your Rabb. وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ and cure for that which is in the chest, in the bosoms, in the heart, meaning inside. The cure of it is in the Quran. And Allah says, In it there is guidance and there is mercy. But for those who believe, if you believe and you have the correct heart, it will impact on you. Let me go back to the story I was making mention of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. 
When a person looked at Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the correct heart, or he heard the verses of the Quran with the correct heart, his life changed in such a powerful way that he became known as a Sahabi and you had to say, may Allah be pleased with him after his name. But there were people like Abu Jahl and Al Akhnas ibn Shuraik and Abu Lahab and the others who looked at the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They were absolutely fortunate to look at him, but they looked at him with the wrong heart, the heart of jealousy, the heart of envy, the heart of desire, the heart of the love for power and materialism. What happened? It had a negative effect on them. And this is why whenever you are listening to a reminder of the deen, clean your heart. Without a clean heart, you are going to think, who's this man talking to me? He is like this. He is like that. Forget about the man. It could be anyone. If what he is saying is valid and correct, Wallahi, you have to understand it was Allah who made it hit your ears. What got to you was never ever meant to miss you. This is a very vast narration, but it includes also statements. Something that got to your ears, you're going to be asked about it. Whether you heard it on the radio or the internet or a WhatsApp clip or whatever else, the fact that it got to your ears, you're going to be questioned. Hey, we sent you a message. How? Well, one day you were browsing through your phone and beep, beep, the phone beeped. What happened? You opened it and there was a reminder there, reminding you to fulfill your salah. That was us. We sent it to you. What did you do about that reminder? Oh, I just hit delete because the memory on my phone was a bit much. No excuses. When it comes to pornography, we make sure that we buy an external drive to save it. And when it comes to that which is calling you towards Allah, then suddenly your memory is too full. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. My brothers and sisters, this is worth crying about. It is something serious. We need to save ourselves. And this is why thereafter Allah describes his friends. Imagine Allah says he has friends. Who are they? I want to be one of them. You want to be one of them. It's not that difficult. It requires dedication. That's what it is. And it requires seeking the forgiveness of Allah. Verse number 62. Allah says, <laughs> Behold, indeed the friends of Allah, no fear upon them. They have no need to be scared at all nor will they be sad, no sadness. The question is, hey, I want to be a friend. So what happens? Allah describes how you become a friend of Allah immediately after that. You know what he says? Those who have two qualities, they have Iman, which means they have believed in Allah and they have consciousness of Allah. We've translated the term Taqwa in 20 different ways in the past. But one of the beautiful meanings is to be conscious of Allah or to fear transgressing in a way that you would displease the one you love most who is supposed to be Allah. That's the meaning of taqwa. To create a barrier between you and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I claim to love Allah. Well, I better be worried about doing things that are going to spoil that love. Subhanallah, you have an illicit relationship with a person you're not even supposed to be in touch with. And you are worried what type of messages you send them. You'll read it two, three times. I hope she doesn't misunderstand what I'm saying, right? Because why? Imagine if she feels hurt, she will stop messaging me after today. What are you talking about? You are so worried about how she perceives your message. And when it comes to Allah, you're not even worried about anything. You don't think about that relationship. So many things you are doing that have angered Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you just carry on. That's Allah. We heard the other day he's Ghafoorul Rahim. Well, he says he is Shadeedul Iqab as well. He says he punishes as well. Yes, he is most forgiving. But remember, turn to Allah. Don't use that as an excuse to sin. That's the weakness. We do believe Allah is most forgiving. But when we say, okay, I'm going to sin because I know Allah is forgiving. So tonight we're partying. Astaghfirullah. You might die before that. You might die during that. That is an insult to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, imagine your child does something bad. They break a glass. And you say, don't worry, how are you? Are you okay? Did you get hurt? They say, no, I didn't. Well, then don't worry. Glasses, we'll buy another one tomorrow. Don't worry. 
Next day you take the little girl or the boy to the market and you buy a glass. You come back and she says, Oh, daddy was so cool with me. Let me break another glass. So she takes the glass, boom, broken. <gasps> Did you get hurt? No, you didn't. Don't worry about the glass. We'll buy another one. Trust me, when she does it the third time, what will you do? You're going to say, hey, behave. That's the minimum that you will say, right? And if she says, but daddy, the two days, how did you react? And today, why are you telling me to behave? Watch, I'm going to do it tomorrow again. Then what happens? I don't even want to mention. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. How could we do that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He forgave you once, twice. He will continue forgiving, but don't do it purposely. That's the thing. Save yourselves from the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this we made mention of those who are believers and they have taqwa. They are known as awliyaullah. Allah says for them will be good news in this world as well as the next. Before they die, they will already have good news of a beautiful place in Jannah. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then describes something beautiful. You know, when you are trying to obey Allah, people will laugh at your beard. They will laugh at your hair. They will laugh at your hijab. They will probably laugh at the way you do things. They will laugh at how you read salah. They will laugh at the fact that you have a bottle in the, in the loo in order to wash up with water after you have used the toilet. They will laugh at absolutely everything. Don't worry. You know. You have guidance. You need to thank Allah. Oh Allah, I know what I'm doing. I'm so thankful to you. You've guided me. Subhanallah. At the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well, people used to say bad words to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, honor belongs to Allah, not to them. They do not control honor, dignity. They can say what they want. If you know that relationship between you and Allah is powerful, don't worry about them. Verse number 65, Surah Yunus, Allah says, don't let their statement make you sad. Indeed, izzah and honor, it is solely and only the property of Allah. Allah owns it. Allah is the one who will give you honor. No matter how hard people try to defame you, to say bad about you, don't worry. Like we said, your bread is not buttered by them. Subhanallah. It's by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worry about the world. You carry on doing the work. At the end of the day, in the akhirah, you will be from among the winners. But if you become stressed and depressed because of what they are saying, your life becomes a mess. You won't be able to worship Allah because your concentration will be gone. You won't be able to worship Allah correctly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us from this type of worry and this type of concern. Indeed, Allah is all hearing, all knowing. The last verse I want to make mention of, and inshallah, I will continue tomorrow making mention of this. I'm only starting it today. You see the Pharaoh, Fir'aun, he was there at the time of Musa alayhi salatu was salam. And there is a beautiful story that is the most repeated in the Quran. Each time it is repeated, it is in order to highlight a different point. One of them was that the Prophet Musa alayhi salatu was salam, he tried and he called and he went to the Pharaoh and he told him and he explained to him and he gave him the signs that Allah showed him or Allah gave him and so on. And the Pharaoh knew that this man is telling the truth, but he denied it. There came a time when Musa alayhi salatu was salam made the dua against the Fir'aun. What did he say? He says, Verse number 88, Surah Yunus. He says, Oh my Rabb, you've given this man so much. He's using it to lead astray. Oh Allah, obliterate his wealth. Extinguish it totally. Oh Allah, punish him severely. Oh Allah, seal his heart. For indeed, he won't learn his lesson until he is punished. Imagine a prophet of Allah making that dua. Why did he make that dua? Well, he was patient for so long. The point I want to raise my brothers and sisters, save yourselves from the bad dua, meaning the evil of the dua that is made against you by the one whom you've oppressed or by a saint or someone who's close to Allah. Who is that? You wouldn't even know. When you harm someone, yes, they may forgive you once, twice, three times. One day, 
if they have to raise their hands and say, Oh Allah, destroy that man, it spells doom for us. May Allah never do that to us. Let's save ourselves from this. Tomorrow we will continue on this particular topic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Save us from the dua of the one whom we've oppressed. Why oppress them in the first place? And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.